Okay, good afternoon or good morning, grade 11. So this is uh, me explaining this um, IO revision uh, PDF that I've made for you that is hopefully should just help you when you are looking at your, um, when you're looking at IOs um, and just reminding us of a few key things. So obviously, um, do have a look at the rubrics. Everything underlined is a link. Do have a look at the rubric. It's amazing how many students don't look at the rubric and and not aware of how they're being assessed. Um, you know, we've done a lot of work on global issues, as we mentioned before. You can look at them through the lens of an STG, you can look at them through fields of inquiries, or you look, can look at them thematically. It's completely up to you. What I would recommend is that your global issue is a statement, you know, think of it almost as a thesis statement. And the easiest way to do this is to have sort of X causes Y. You know, have a verb in there. Um, so, for example, gender stereotyping leads to inequality. Okay, so you can see here's one thing um, which could be linked to an STG. Here's what it leads to. So don't just have gender inequality because it's probably too broad. And remember, as ever, is the issue one of wide scale significance? Is its impact felt every day in local context? And is the issue transnational? If you can answer those three questions, chance that they have a global issue. So obviously our literary text, we have um, what we did in term one, readers write uh, semester one, readers, writers and text. So we have Frost and Dickinson. Um, so everything that is in purple are the extract requirements. So what is the size of sample you need to take? So for example, if it's Robert Frost, one poem, you could do two. Um, there's nothing to say you can't do two, but I strongly suggest if you do a poem, um, it must be, uh, you know, I don't think you have time to talk about everything in two. Remember, it's 40 lines only. I think nearly all of um, the poetry we have looked at is less than 40 lines, but do check. And obviously the body of work would be his collection of poetry that we looked at. The same with Emily Dickinson. Um, Emily Dickinson is for HL only, so our two SL students, you can't do Emily Dickinson. Um, and there's obviously a link to our stylistic features when we look at poetry. If we do something from time and space, which is what we've looked at this semester, we obviously have Persepolis. You're looking at three to five pages. Um, you can choose part one by itself as a body of work, or you could choose part two as itself a body of work, or you could do both of them together. It's completely up to you. Um, but if you want to take part one in isolation, that's fine. That counts as a body of work. Um, and obviously we've got our understanding comics um, work that we did. And I think it's really important if we look at Persepolis that we at least try to mention some of those stylistic features. Um, one interesting thing about Persepolis is it's, it's quite rare when we are told the purpose of a piece of work in the introduction to Trappy states quite emphatically the reason she wrote this. Partly, of course, it's a builder's Roman, it's a, a childhood journey into maturity, but also it's to show the world that Iranian people are not how they are portrayed on TV, sort of as terrorists. So she's giving you the purpose there. Think about that. I think that's important, something that you could easily mention. Um, if we look at Macbeth, 40 lines has to be 40 consecutive lines. Okay, you can't mix and match. And obviously the body of work is the whole play. Um, I've put the context here because I think it's really important. Um, you know, why was Macbeth written? What was the message that uh, Shakespeare was trying to get across? You know, remember the stuff we looked at about the gunpowder plot, about the succession of Queen Elizabeth, about the uh, James I writing demonology. It is important because it does link to the didactic element of this, about what Macbeth Shakespeare is trying to get across. So there are literary texts. So obviously our non-literary texts, we could have the Gillette adverts, the ACLU adverts. You're taking one maximum of two adverts, and obviously the body of work is the collection of adverts as a whole. Um, have a look at our analyzing adverts um, work that we did. It's really important because one thing I feel that we didn't do very well in our um, in our practice IOs is talk about the body of work as a whole. So if you're mentioning Gillette adverts, you know, mention that 
throughout you know history until very recently Gillette adverts have tended to reinforce certain gender stereotypes and obviously more recently you know with the the best a man can be etc they have very much tried to change and challenge that narrative why have they done that okay so think about that obviously with the ACLU adverts their purpose is to work against discrimination that they feel is happening in the United States if we look at Snow White or Gladiator three to five stills that are related that are from the same scene plus any dialogue from that scene so do have a look uh, I've attached links to the dialogue for both of them it's all on Google Classroom so all of this stuff is on Google Classroom it's nothing that you haven't been given before I know sometimes we're not so good at finding stuff on Google Classroom so I've attached links for everything um, analyzing a film um, I think you can include um, one or two stylistic features from that you know for Snow White I put purpose fairy tales remember that this is obviously it's a Disney film now it's based on one of Grimm's fairy tales um, think about that in itself the didactic element of it being a fairy tale and also the didactic element of Disney films I think that's very important um, we have photography we have you know Yves Marchand we have Hossam Katan we have Benny Lam again it's one to two photos um, I think one is fine if you want to do two that's fine really important think about the body of work you know I mean Hossam Katan said he wants to raise awareness outside of Syria about what was happening Benny Lam he said he wanted to bring um, you know raise awareness of the inequality in Hong Kong so that is is I think the main thing that probably not all of us did in our practice IOs we didn't talk about the body of work as a whole we talked about the extract and we did that really well didn't talk about the body of work as a whole um, you know I know we've talked about this but it's really really important you cannot use the same global issue extract or combination many of the practices we've done in your real IO um, if you do it will be counted as plagiarism by the IO um, by the IB sorry you know so for example at a push you could if you'd done your um, practice IO on Macbeth you could still choose Macbeth if you chose a completely different extract and it was a different global issue and it was a different non-literary text so be really careful with this because it is your responsibility um, in terms of choosing okay because we've all done a lot of practice IOs I can't remember if I've got 30 students and we've done four practice IOs all 120 combinations it's up to you okay but it's really important you understand this um, so this is just to recap there are links in all of this because obviously for the next two weeks you're going to be making your outlines for your real IOs um, and ask any questions as ever about this thanks